in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Topic Thunder. Yeah, here on the Top 10 Show. Thank you all so much for downloading this video and coming along with us on this fun uh, show that we've been doing for the patrons. It's, I've really enjoyed it. I said this last week, and I've been saying it again this week. Like It's just been fun to answer these questions. They seem to be getting better the deeper we get into this self-isolation, self-quarantining stuff, and maybe just people have more time to spend on these questions, so they're asking more nuanced questions, I think. What do you think, Matt? Uh, that, plus, I think it also sparks more questions from us. It gets us kind of going down a different rabbit hole Yeah, sometimes. Mm-hmm. So... You know, it's it's worked out nicely. Uh, people keep sending, and if you are a patron, <laughs> donating at the five up and up level, you can uh, find the email there. There are posts. It's it's not hard to find. Right. Just send, up, send us whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, How are you, man? How's it going? What's what's going on with you? Good. I have a question for you, Catherine. Oh. And I having this discussion. Okay. So tear out a bunch of plants in the yard, and uh, okay. If, she was like, ah, she kind of quietly said goodbye to a plant, you know, just like I feel, feel bad that we're hopefully we can find a new home for it. Right. Uh, got me thinking about, you know, those large uh, trees that take up tremendous amount of acreage. Yeah. It's one individual tree, right? It has its own ecosystem living off of it, numerous animals and other plants that, you know, yeah. it provides the nutrients, the structure, whatever the case is. Yeah. It have a right to exist. <laughs> You're asking me if the tree has a right to exist. Yeah. It's been there for a thousand years. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. Long after we are. It's- I think, I think that's a personal thing, right? I mean, I feel like the tree, um, if you're asking in a philosophical point of view, then I would say, yes, the tree has every right to exist. Uh, yeah. The tree has existed for this long because uh, multiple generations of people for years uh, decades have said it has a right to exist. I don't want to take it down. There's legacy. That being said, if you can buy the land that the tree is on, then the land is yours to do as you see fit. So if you want to take down the tree, then you have every right to take down the tree if that's what you want to do. But you've bought the land. It's your right. It well, sucks, but it's true. So I told her about it because we're walking. We do the, <laughs> the neighborhood and there right. are there are some cactuses that are easily 100 years old. Wow. And they built the house around that cactus type of it was a showpiece. And there's numerous right. there's huge succulents that have to be like 40, 50, 60 years old, easy, just given their size. Like there's yeah. one you can see from another hilltop about a tenth of a mile away. You can see this one looks like an aloe plant. Oh, but nice. It back whatnot, but it was just massive. And it's like, it's been there longer than I have. <laughs> it will more than likely be there longer than I will. Yeah. It's just like if I take that out, like this, that seems so cruel. It's, of course, it's earned its right and its place on some level. Just by, I mean, granted, it was you know other people helping it along and whatnot. So you could right. say, so the tree has more of an argument because it's existed for that long. Right. I don't know. Does uh, the, what does Catherine think? Does she agree with you? Yeah, it's a weird. It, huh? Ultimately, you could cut it down, but right feels like you shouldn't. Feels like you just let that thing go. I, I'm sure you're not the only couple that has, you know, had that possibility occur to them about that tree through the years and probably mm-hmm. had the same discussion, probably came to the same conclusion, which is why that tree keeps existing. So, you know, I, I get it. And maybe that tree nefariously, uh, you know, is sending these signals out to you while you're sleeping through its uh, pollen or whatever. So you're convinced never to cut it down. It could be one of those trees. <laughs> do, you, do you have, can you cite a single example? Because if you can, I don't believe in this potential threat. But the happening, Martin M. Night Shyamalan, oh. the happening. <laughs> well, I don't think we knew about one that I'm thinking of until within the past 10 years that this huge entire structure, in essence, or, or being right. one entity. Uh, right. It was like a forest. And right. It's been deforested in certain sections. And it just, just, 
fucking going. Well, if an earthquake happens and the tree collapses, I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Is that more or less uh, okay? I mean, I, I feel like it's... Well, it's a natural thing at that point. Yeah. What, so as a human being not wanting it around, that's natural. You naturally don't want it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I'd, I'd let the tree exist unless it's becoming a blight or something that is impairing the function of people around you. That's the only reason I would ever take that tree. You take out that one tree, that one specific one, uh, yeah. look it up in, in, so people can, but you can look it up. Um, that destroys the entire ecosystem for that area because it's yeah. all built around this tree. Yeah. Or this mm-hmm. one organism. Well, there you go. There you go. So that's <laughs> kind of the stuff we're talking about on quarantine. <laughs> Uh, we're in the rabbit hole now, man. <laughs> I can't imagine we're going to get anything specific like that, but it was, I don't know if we came to that conclusion between us. And I, I haven't spoken to really anybody else outside of pleasantries on people you pass on the street or something. Right. Like that. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you'll find no bigger supporter of nature than Lindley. So she would tell you immediately, don't, don't you cut that tree down. She loves everything in nature. So uh, I'm not quite as precious about nature, but that's why well, I just, Sorry about that. Well, itchy trigger finger. <laughs> itchy trigger finger. <laughs> well, now we'll start in with the real topics. There, a nice little subdivide. Perfect, uh, perfect place to bookmark. Jump into something else. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. Uh, I think you're asking first this week. Sure. Uh, the first one comes from Mr. Brian Akins. Hey. Ooh. Says over several recent episodes, Matt has alluded to seeing aliens at too young of an age. Mm movies did either of you see too early for me it was actually the original alien when i was seven wow mm. thanks and stay safe brian akins mm. good question um saw too early i think the first two films and i think people heard me talk about it before but i'll, I'll, I'll touch on them again i saw jaws way too early uh which is why i don't go to the beach rarely i rarely go to the beach and if i do i rarely go in the water and it's even more rare when i go in the water above my head uh, or above four feet, past four feet, because of what they say in that scene in the movie. Um, if Steve Morris is listening to it, my co-host Cinephiles, he hates that Jaws has kind of like turned people off to sharks. He thinks sharks are not as vicious as people think. But all I can tell you is that movie messed me up and permanently made me afraid of sharks. Yeah. Um, and the other one is The World According to Garp. I saw it nine years old because my parents thought, because of Mork and Mindy, they thought Robin Williams was mm-hmm. you know creating like family-friendly entertainment. I, you know, two immigrant parents, they don't understand the ratings on films. So uh, this thing was rated R, so they should have known. But we go in there, and of course, it's transvestites and blowjobs and all kinds of crazy shit going on there. Dogs getting their ears bit off. It's nuts. Um, so for me, there was a lot of the covering of the ears and the eyes and the blah, blah, blah through the whole thing. But those are the two movies that jump out that I saw too early in life. Okay. Yeah, there's there's so many. I saw <laughs> oh, really wow. many movies that I shouldn't have seen at a young age. I saw RoboCop way too young. Oh wow! Uh, the Nightmare on Elm Streets and uh, Friday the Thirteenth too young. Thought so it was never in my bag, so I didn't watch them. But I saw it. Right. Uh, How old were you? How old were you? Like seven? Let's see. Seven between seven and nine. Wow. Yeah, that is too young for. This I was like eight or nine. Oof. Okay. Yeah. And the just the early boobs in the locker room, and I was like, I like this movie, <laughs> this movie a lot. And then I think what the one dude does cocaine, yeah, uh, girls or something ridiculous, and I didn't exactly know what that was, but I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, store this away. Um, but yeah, it's somewhere between seven and nine. Yeah, I don't know. Just go to a friend's house, we rent it because VHS or something along those lines. Yeah, and we can do. I mean, kids nowadays, they're watching stuff at like five years old, you know, four years old. It's crazy nowadays how much access they have to stuff that's like we wouldn't even oh. consider having access to. Or we had to jump through so many hoops to get access to, you know. So, you know, my affinity for, you know, Pennywise for me. Oh, yes. Been the author of my dreams since I read the book. Uh, or my nightmares, rather. Right. My nephew, who was five, uh, saw the trailer for the first one. Oh, no. Like four or whatever the case is, because he was just watching things on YouTube on someone's phone, his mom or his dad's. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And then he started talking about, you know, the scary clown and this, that, and the other. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. Just lived with him for a while, buddy. So that shit sucks. It, it got another. Too young. I never would have seen that trailer. Oh, God, no. Hell no. <laughs> it got another nose. The legacy continues. I know. It's a vicious <laughs> cycle. 
It's such a shame, dude. Um, yeah, but I, don't, I think those are the only two for me that stand out that I remember. I think my parents, after the GARP experience, were a little more vigilant about what to take me to, what not to take me to. I think they were yeah. aware of that uh, there. Um, all right. Thank you, Brian, for that question. Very cool question. Right. Uh, let me move on to Willie Logie. Willie Logie. How do John and Matt, working from home, surrounded, my, surrounded by my wife and kids, slowly losing my mind? Thankfully, your top 10 worst movies we saw in the theater is keeping me sane today. Good. Mm-hmm. While, while listening to you shit on movies, it made me think of terrible movies I've seen in my past. This sparked the idea for this question. What terrible movie did you rent over and over when your parents mm-hmm. took you to the video store as a kid? I used to get a movie called Robot Jocks. Oh, fuck. I remember Robot Jocks. I it's know. it's awful, but it had giant robots fighting as an 8 to 10-year-old. It was phenomenal. Having caught scenes of it now, oh, man, is it terrible. Yes. Anyway, keep safe and see you in London when you reschedule. Thanks, Willie Logie. All right. Terrible movie that what you rented. Robot over Jocks? Over. Huh? What was Robot Jocks? It's like, uh, it was like um, Real Steel, like a real early 80s version of Real Steel, okay. where the, the, the robots are yeah. controlled by the humans and they're in boxing matches and stuff like that. Never so, seen it. Never even yeah. heard of it. It's a weird oh, little God. like offshoot one. Uh, I didn't have any specific because I, you know, my brother and I were kind of always hunting for more. Yeah, yeah. My sister was more of the routine pattern. So I've seen Shag and Adventures in Babysitting. Oh, yeah. And a couple others, like a lot of times because that was hers. And just, well, okay, that's what we're watching. Oh, yeah. Fun. I mean, I like the movies, but not that much. Right. Um, especially Shag. Like, I understand every time I was like, I get why this is entertaining, but I'm a well, kid. I've seen this. It's Phoebe Cates, you know, it's Phoebe Cates. Uh, let's, let's fucking move on. <laughs> but nothing specific like that. Yeah. Out of your like action movies, but they weren't terrible. Right, right. I don't know if there was a terrible movie that I rented back in the 80s over and over again. I mean, because I tried to rent as many things that I didn't know, like I hadn't seen or mm-hmm. had heard or read in magazines that were the, or newspaper articles, the movies to watch. So I didn't rent too many bad movies. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure I rented Rambo 3 more than I should have. I will say that. I probably saw Rambo 3 more times than I should have seen Rambo 3 when it came out. Um, there aren't a lot of terrible Schwarzenegger films. So I won't throw that, I won't throw that in the mix. From uh, that time period, there's only a couple. Yeah, there's only a couple. Like Raw Deal is terrible. Uh, and then something else. They do. like. I like um, Red Heat. A lot of people don't like Red Heat. I like I don't Red, Red Heat. Heat. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Commando that I think is. Oh yeah. I yeah. never understood it even at the time, and I love other stuff. Yeah. Um, what about yeah. what about a movie? So bad movie that if it's on, you find it on cable or something oh. for years, you always watch it. Yeah, I, there's a lot of those. I'll always I'll always watch Batman v Superman because I just for me I watch these movies because I'm like. I can't understand how it's such a train wreck, right? Um, but there's something interesting about it, even though it's a train wreck. Whereas, whereas opposed to Suicide Squad, I'll never stop and watch that because that is basically a shit film. And so it's just not for me. But not there are me. there are other films that you watch like train like car crashes. You're just, you're marveling at how this was possible. You're marveling at how they kept messing this up because you hope there's a better movie in there that's gonna pop up one day. While you're watching it, just just randomly, the movie's going to come together in a different way and be yeah. good. like the Hulk, the first Hulk movie with Eric Bana. Whenever I flip on it, I'm, I'll watch it, but I'm always marveling. Like, yeah. God, how'd you make these missteps? I don't understand. You know? Yeah. Uh, the one that I thought of was Attack. What is it? Attack of the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> yeah. You've seen it more than likely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw it on VHS uh, or something. But like every time it's on, for some reason, I watch it. Every single time, doesn't matter where it is in the movie, it's got a weird fix. Now, I may just watch ten minutes. Like, there's no end point. You're right. A refresh, yeah. and then sometimes I watch it through the end. Yeah. And I don't understand why that movie. It's so bad. Yeah. I really enjoy how awful it is. <laughs> it's really weird, man. Yeah. Um, like the little designs and everything like that, because some of the acting is atrocious, and this oh, yeah. set design is ridiculous. But the cotton candy little body snatcher type thing. I, it's, you know what? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I feel that way about uh, Rocky five and Star Trek five. 
I will always at least give them five to ten minutes to watch okay, whenever five? I think. Really? Yeah, because I'm like, what was the thought pattern? Like, why? Like, what? It's so oh, Shatner's hubris. That's yeah. the thought pattern. Right? That's the thing. Because the chemistry is still there between the three guys. The script is not that strong. And then when you start to slide into the Luck and Bill stuff, you're just like, okay. The half Spock, whatever, half Vulcan guy. You're just like, I can't with this. You're just, you're just tossing in a character and asking us to believe in this character who has never existed, never been referenced once in any of the episodes or movies. And all of a sudden, we have to believe this guy is Spock's half brother somewhere. He's been wandering around looking for God. Uh, so it just was well, all of it. Was, he is a, isn't he a god, or he thinks he's a god ultimately? No, no, he's trying to. He, he he's as powerful as. Uh, uh, Spock is, but he uses um, like mind control with uh, whispering and, and seducing people like a cult leader. And he's trying to lead them to what he thinks is the creator of the universe of the yeah. galaxy. Uh, and when they get there, he is of course shocked by the fact that this isn't the creator or the, of the galaxy at all. It's just a very super powered entity that wants to use him. And the fact that he's been brainwashed by this entity while he was brainwashing other people. So I get the genesis of what it was supposed to be, but like, it's so terrible in the execution, you know? Yeah. It shows you, cause I will watch, I'll watch, uh, um, you know, two and four, four a lot. Four's arguably yeah. my favorite, but I also like six. Yeah. Six is good. Six is good. I love the whole stupid. They're in a gulag, <laughs> you know, and the, the weird, the shape shifting on yeah. character yeah, out of nowhere, but it really works. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it has no business working, but it really works. Yeah. I agree. So I don't go back and watch one, three, and five ever, ever. Yeah. One is good. I like one. I'll defend one. I, I'll, I understand three. I understand. I totally understand five, but I'll defend one. Yeah. I just, for some reason, two, four, and six. I never realized it was two, four, and six until you pointed it out. Yeah. The uh, even numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. What's our next one, man? Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Willie. Uh, say hi to the wife and kids. Don't let them know that you just shit talk. <laughs> Ruben Enriquez says, hi, Matt and John. My question is basketball related. Is there an NBA pass team that is loved that you feel is overhyped or a team that gets too much credit? Ooh. Team could be from any era. For example, mine would be a somewhat recent team in the grit and grind Grizzlies besides Marcus Gasol and Conley for a specific stretch. After their big moment beating the number one Spurs in the first round, not much success followed them in the preceding years or the following years. Uh, though many sports writers love them during and even now, I was just considering uh, them to be the indie team that was fun to watch from time to time. Thanks for asking my question, and stay safe, guys. Thumbs up. Wow. <laughs> um, I'll tell you a team that was overhyped. All right. You're not going to like this, but this is how I feel. I, I think the New York Knicks from that 90s when they played the uh, Bulls uh -huh. uh, and the New York Knicks when they played the Heat, in, the, in those uh, games, I thought they, I thought they were overhyped as hell. I, I didn't think they were that. I thought Starks was a weak ass point guard for them who would occasionally show up, but always uh, shirked away from the big moment. I thought Patrick was never, and Patrick never had a winning mentality after he left Georgetown. Remember, okay. they, they won that one championship. He hasn't won Dick since. Like he lost to Villanova in the upset, couldn't lead the team to the victory of Villanova. Then comes into the NBA and becomes the Bulls whipping boy and essence every time in the playoffs. Okay. And the one time they make it to the finals, it's the strike shortened season when Jordan wasn't a part of it and they face the Rockets and lose. And so to me, I, I just never, I, I thought they were always overhyped. Yeah. They had good players, but I never thought they were a great team like Anthony Mason, Larry Johnson, all good players, uh, Patrick Ewing, what have you. But I just didn't think overall they were a great team. And I didn't like the way they played basketball at all. It's different than the Pistons. Like the Pistons sure. were thugs, but the Pistons had great, a uh, great point guard in Isaiah Thomas, great shooters, Mars, 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 Vinny Johnson. They, they had a good talent. I just thought they, they were more, more like a, a bull, more bully ball than anything else with that's, basketball. That's been the Knicks' problem for a long time is no true alpha point guard. Right. Patrick was never an alpha on his own. And Carmelo. When they shipped out basically everything to get him, now they've sunk the franchise. This so they've been with without an alpha, true alpha star. Yeah, in forever. It's been forever. Yeah, they had it in Porzingis if Porzingis would stay healthy, but the relationship soured. Yeah, you know, you never know because looking back on it now, of course, it just seems you know fait complete that they were always going to lose. Right. Uh, 
I feared them more in those Stark, uh, Starks, Xavier McDaniel, Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley years mm-hmm. because they could, they could rough you up kind yeah. of the fair way as opposed to the Pistons just being pricks. Yeah. Uh, fair is a stretch, but I mean, they were rough. <laughs> but the later years with like Allen Houston, when he was the lead of the team, I never bought into it. And right. then when he was by himself, it's like you got no surrounding cast. Right. They were too weak. Yeah. I want to say, uh, well, I was just, that's just for shit talking purposes. Uh, <laughs> no, that's a good one. What did he have the flip side of that as well? No, he just said, uh, or hyped or too much credit. do you have a, do you have a team that was too hyped? Too hyped. No, because ultimately when you when we look back through history, you go, yeah, they were what they were um, at the whole time. Or maybe it's, I don't know. You'd have to think of like things that uh, went against your opinion initially. Yeah. Like, like, look at the 2000, was it 2011 Mavericks or 2000? What, what year did they win the title? It's 20, I want to say 2011. 2011, yeah. Do you think that team was a great team or they just caught Miami at the right time because they were still figuring out what their identity was with those three stars? Yes, and yes. <laughs> okay, okay. I, well, that's at the time it felt like that. It's just like they haven't established themselves to get, you know, t- together. Yeah. It takes two seasons. Um, you know, yeah. the Warriors with Durant being an exception to that. Right. Pretty much everywhere else, it takes about two seasons to get everybody on the same page. Now, LeBron mm-hmm. and Anthony this year, maybe they could do it. Or, maybe. you know, uh, Kawhi and PG. Um, but, yeah, uh, I just it, – it was right place, right time. It's yeah. Kind of like, uh, on some level with Toronto, if Golden State doesn't have all those injuries, does Toronto win that? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well. Um, but if everybody's healthy, that's still a, that's a that's an elite all time squad. Nothing against you, Raptors. I loved watching you win. Right. Um, so yeah, there are those years where just like ah, certain circumstances worked out. But they said about like the Warriors run early on, they kept hitting teams with injuries to key players. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's just like you play who's in front of you ultimately, so you can't fault like Shaq now saying that a there shouldn't be a finish to the season and be any champion should have an asterisk next to the championships. Like if they finish out, then a championship is a championship. Yeah, exactly. That's a ridiculous comment by him. Yeah. Um, like, you know, we, we played strike shortened seasons. We played situations that were, you know, there've been issues going on in the middle of the season. So this is a situation. This isn't like the players got mad at the owners and walked off the court. This is like um, act of God type stuff. So there should not be an asterisk next to an act of God type situation where exactly. know, virus has gotten out of control. That's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, I don't know. The older he gets, I, I, sometimes the kind of his comments are just super ridiculous, but well, you know, I get $8 million the same. So what exactly. Do I- You're a talking head at that point on yeah. some level. So you need to say provocative stuff. It's like with Kendrick Perkins on Twitter. I don't know if you ever see his and just like you know, top five uh, small forwards of all time. And he throws on Paul Pierce at five because that generates a ton of traction and discussion. Right. And, it, you know, he played with them. Right, so right. Why not show honor there? But it's just like, no way Paul Pierce is top five of all time. I don't think so either. That's hilarious. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Paul Pierce top five. When he said uh, on TV that uh, he was asked point blank, do you think you're better than D. Wade? He was like, yep. Like, I don't know about that, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I like that, but yeah, I like that you feel that way. That's how you should play. That's how you, that's yeah. what you should believe. But there's also a thing about having perspective. You know, you got to understand you know, like this thing. Like, ah, it's, it drives me insane when the, the players do that kind of and keep and keep it going. Like they in the off season, they just know. Nope. Yeah, yeah, I'm better than him. Totally. And it's like, no, oh, no, you're not. No, I'll show you the metrics. You're, you're not better than. Him. It's ridiculous. Well, exactly. But on that, like, like he left off Kawhi on that. What? Team. Exactly. You're like, okay. You clearly just did this to spark. You're a talking head. You're just, yeah. it keeps you in a job. In yeah. yeah. Um, I still think those Lakers don't win that title if he's not injured for that game seven. That's just, I just don't think it's, I don't think they win that title. I, I, I think Kendrick like shuts them down. They were primed and ready to lose the Celtics again. <laughs> yeah, what can you never know. Yeah. Never know. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> That's like the, the, the Cavs championship. Draymond getting suspended to me completely altered the trajectory of that. Yep. But he won. Yep. Like, in my head, if Draymond stays in the game, they win and they, they take that championship. But guess what? He didn't 
because he kept hitting dudes in the huevos yeah. every opportunity he could through the playoffs, man. He was there. I told him, no mas. It's like and stupid. Ron, it's just like, dude, no, no way. No way. Some guys just have a self-destructive impulse when they play, man. They just have it. They can't keep uh, it. Robin was the same way when he was at San Antonio, right? Kicking that guy in the nuts and the, there was the photographer and getting in all that situation, like just uh, stupid stuff. If you can't control them, they just get crazy. So, yeah, yeah. players, yeah. you know. Certain guys. Yeah. Uh, we're at 25. Do you want to answer one more? Sure. Let's do one more. Okay. Uh, this one is from Nancy Mallory. Yours? Nan- Nancy, uh, uh, I'm reading this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, John and Matt. I hope you guys are doing well in quarantine. I recently joined Patreon. Thank you. But I have been watching the show for less than a year. Since the lockdown, I've seen numerous cast reunions online, such as The Maze Runner, High School Musical, and Community. Oh, okay. Interesting. What movie or TV show cast would you like to see reunite? Stay safe and keep up the good work. Nancy Mallory. All right, man. Notice what cast would you want to see reunite? So you got to think it's it's in the format of we're going to be watching it. You know, they're doing it on laptops, so you need a small cast. Right. Uh, Breaking Bad. Okay. Aaron Paul and Cranston. Yeah. And, uh, Cranston. And exactly. You only have to pull in maybe his son. Right. Right. But you can keep it small just on a few different characters. Bring in uh, Mike, you know, bring in sister. Bring yeah. in, uh, whenever you need them. Yeah. I don't know, but then it still expands outward. Is there anything that's smaller? Well, they just did the community one. Oh, they're going to do the community one, rather. That's only six people, plus Jim Rash, I guess, and Ken Jeong, so eight, I guess. But um, community was large. That was fun to watch. Okay. Um, My mind goes to NYPD Blue the first season. If there was any way we could get David Caruso, Dennis Franz, James McDaniel, Nicholas Torturo, Gordon Clapp. No, Gordon, I forget what his name is, who was who played that other character. Um, and then maybe the blonde who was the the uh, uh, receptionist. And then I don't and then I think Amy Brenneman. If we could get that crew together okay. and just talk with whoever is, you know, Botchko and talk about like, you know, that first season, maybe get Sherry Stringfield to stop in. Um, that's for like fly in and fly out. And talk about the first season and how it changed television and the shit they went through. And and then also Caruso, like getting to finally say, hey, it was a big mistake. I certainly was too big for my britches. I learned my lesson. Um, I'm still very proud of the work I did, blah, blah, blah. That to me would put me at so at ease uh, about that show because it is the one thing that always bothers me. And in that last season when they brought everybody back, including Jimmy Smits, they didn't bring back – uh, David Caruso because of the way he left the show. And I'm like, ah, it sucked. So they couldn't get over it uh, yeah. to make it happen. So that's what I would say. I mean, I would say the Sopranos, but Gandolfini's dead. So. Um, you know, one I think they could actually make an interesting show out of yeah. is, so I haven't watched the show in years, but I, I watched like the first five, six seasons, which is Curb. Yeah. Oh, Curb. Yeah. So if whoever Larry is with, because doesn't he... Didn't he get divorced? I think it was after I stopped watching. Yeah, yeah, with Cheryl Hines. Yeah, I got divorced like four or five seasons ago. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. If he has another lady in his life and they're stuck in quarantine and she's on like her laptop zooming, <laughs> and then you could pull in other people and Larry's like talks about, I was at the store and like, you know, this little one sneezed on me kind of thing or whatever. <laughs> he had to quarantine and then maybe Jeff Garland calls him to like, you could have the camera following around the house for a couple minutes and then Garland calls him. And then right. broke between the two of us and hey, you didn't send in the co- contract or yeah. you didn't X or whatever the case is. And he's got to tell us the same story, tells a different story, whatever. It could work. Yeah. Um, if they didn't bring back Mad About You already, you could you could do Mad About You. Yeah. <sighs> Cheers. Frazier. Frazier could be fun. Although John Mahoney's passed, you could have Kelsey Grammer, David High Pierce, Jane Leaves. Yeah. Uh, right? That's all you'd yeah. need. I mean, John Mahoney's, like I said, he's passed, but that's all you'd really need is those three. Oh, oh and then maybe Saul Rubinick, who ended up with Jane Leaves at the, or almost ended up with Jane Leaves. So you could put bring him in, and that'd be four or five people. That'd be kind of fun, I think. That'd be good to see that one. I mean, Cheers first season would be incredible, but that's too many people. Too many people. Coach has passed. Oh, yeah, Coach has passed. You don't get Woody. Right, right. Uh, but if you did it, you could still do 
Woody with. I mean, you could get that cast together. That'd be pretty good. That'd be fun, right? That's a good one. That's one I can't get Catherine to watch with me. Oh, really? <laughs> I wanted to start because I've never watched it the whole way through, and just like we're looking for things, like and just this can be an easily digestible. We she wants to go to bed in in a half hour. Hey, we got this. You know, pop on one of these. Right. There's enough seasons, and I remember loving the show. Uh, but I've gone back sporadically to catch specific episodes. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you do uh, Kirstie Alley or do you do Shelley Long? Oh well, I mean, if you're gonna go first season, you go Kirst. Uh, you do Shelley Long. But if I know, gonna... but you could also do Dreamcast. Yeah, true. You know what you do is you do one episode with Shelly and one episode with Kirstie. I think that's – and then you bring Woody onto that season. Hey, Woody onto that uh, reunion. That second episode? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what you do there. I mean, Seinfeld's the easiest, isn't it? It's four people, right? But, I mean, how many people are yeah. clamoring to Michael Richards after his – I mean, he's, he feels like he's still in that prison, like that uh, cancel prison. Like, they, they're not going to let him out, I feel like. It, it was so egregious what he did. I think they're not going to let him out. Yeah. That plus the Letterman apology was one of the most botched oh. I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. People and watching, are laughing and what's that? Fucking, people are laughing in the audience, and Jerry admonishes them. Yeah, this isn't funny. And you're like, oh, dude, you just made it worse. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you were slapping us on the nose, and kind of Michael Richards, in essence, like slow down, really convey what you're trying to say here. Yeah, so. there's nothing that he fucked up. If he hadn't. I think if he hadn't apologized in such an effusive way, um, it had been okay. I think if, you know, I think if he had realized, okay, look, I really went too far. I'm sorry. It was a mistake. Certainly I said all the wrong things. I'm going to donate money here. I'm going to go yeah. out and do the things, but I apologize. I hope to be forgiven about it. And just keep doing your thing. People forget. People will forget. They'll forgive you, you know. But if you, every time, you, you know, it gets brought up, you become a, a mouse that's been beaten into a corner, then people are just like, oh, well, then uh, fuck it. You know, if you're not going to show any kind of strength. Why should I gravitate to you? You know, that's just the natural instinct of human beings. So, yeah, that's a shame. It's a shame. But that would be fun. It's assessment. Huh? It's an interesting assessment. That's what I feel like. Because I've seen it many times. People apologize and then they go, you know, I'm just going to keep doing. And as long as they keep their nose clean, we just forgive them eventually. You know, and that's kind of how it works. Uh, and yeah, but if you keep like, oh, you know, yes, it was a terrible time. Then everyone goes, oh, Jesus, if you're not over it, then I'm not fucking over it. So thanks for initiating that again. You know, so I don't know. Just some PR advice. <laughs> you're in the wrong business. It sounds like you got a hell of an opinion on this. At the I wish. Least, you should be Richard PR guy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's right. <laughs> Outlaw Nation PR. You pick and choose your clients, you know? Oh, totally. Are you kidding? Please. Of course. Uh, all kinds of danger there. Um, all right. Well, there we go. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in these questions. It was a lot of fun to answer them. Oh, like I said, Matt and I, we're just having a great time answering these questions. They're, they're so fun and interesting now. And they, not that they weren't before, but I feel like they've taken the next level. Uh, and maybe you guys have more time yeah. to sit down and think these questions out. And so you're sending a little more detailed, nuanced questions, which are fun to answer. We, and we appreciate it. What do we tell them, Matt? Because we do the show four times a month instead of two times. So more people are sending and, yeah, people have, have sent a couple now over you know three four shows or whatever the case is, but they keep coming up with great questions because they're like, oh, you know what? What about this? And just had a thought in their day and save it and put yeah. it up for us. Uh, and we appreciate it. It's been a fun show. Uh, we've looked forward to doing it, so it will continue. And if you want to join in on the show and contribute, go to patreon.com forward slash the top ten with the number ten. But if you just want to listen, we thank you for listening. And you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost. Uh, check out my other podcast, Embrace the Hate, and make sure you stay safe out there, guys. Yeah, good point, Matt. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, you follow me at the Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram right there below you. And, of course, uh, the Outlaw Nation channel. Please come subscribe, youtube.com slash John Roca Says. Come subscribe. Let's just start marching towards 15,000, 20,000 subscribers. Would appreciate any love. All right, thanks so much to everybody, and uh, we will talk to you next time on another, another brand-new episode of Topic Thunder.